Today on Treetop, we are discussing a wonderful species that's really easy to find in the winter uh, because it's evergreen, mountain laurel, call me a latifolia. Uh, so mountain laurel is a uh, forest specialist, really good in the understory of areas where it's harder for other species to grow. So oftentimes you can find it on uh, really rocky ridge tops. We're on a ridge line right now um, in Tuscarora State Forest in central Pennsylvania. Um, uh, but you'll often find it too in other places. It'll grow other places. It just kind of tends to get outcompeted where the soil is, is a lot easier for other things to grow. So yeah, you'll find it on, uh, on uh, rocky slopes, ridge tops, and also near streams um, where, where sometimes the soil is a little less hospitable for other species. Um, so again, really easy to identify. It has these evergreen leaves that are really just inch and a half, two inches long maybe. Uh, I would say the thing that challenges people the most with mountain laurel is mistaking it for rhododendron. From a distance it can kind of look like a rhododendron, uh, but rhododendron leaves are a lot bigger. They're maybe three or four times bigger. They'll, they'll get about that big. Um, and and, uh, and but they do have a very similar um, waxiness and sort of leathery thick leaves uh, that persist throughout the winter. So I can understand how you could misidentify them. But additionally, if, if we had a rhododendron leaf right here next to it, it would actually be a deeper, darker green. Um, so that's how to tell the difference with, with rhododendron. Rhododendron maximum, if you're keeping track at home. Additionally, the bark of mountain laurel is pretty distinctive. Kind of looks to me like grapevine, um, but obviously when it's in the shrubby, um, especially when it's in this thicket formation here, um, it, you know it's not grapevine, and grapevine doesn't have uh, evergreen waxy leaves either, but has that kind of reddish fibrous sort of bark. Um, uh, as far as uses, um, not really, obviously. It doesn't get too much bigger than this. This is probably your average size mountain laurel, um, so it's not going to be commercially valuable for too much. Um, I have read that in the past it was used to make pipes, not pipes for conveying water, but pipes for, for smoking out of. Um, uh, but I've also read that uh, it's really a bad idea to uh, burn uh, mountain laurel in a campfire or something because it releases toxic fumes um, in the smoke. So. I don't, I don't know how you would safely smoke a pipe made out of mountain laurel, but um, maybe they figured that out back a hundred or, or so years ago. Um, uh, but the real benefits of mountain laurel come from, well, A, just diversity in our forest, um, but for the wildlife. So really, really good cover. Um, it tends to create these thickets. Um, which uh, can be, you know, hard to move through for bigger predators like humans or coyotes or wolves or whatever. Um, so that's fantastic escape cover um, for smaller animals and additionally thermal cover. Imagine if we had a couple feet of snow on here, um, probably the, the warmest place, the warmest, driest place would be underneath these thickets of mountain laurel. Additionally, probably the biggest wildlife benefit is for pollinators um, because this is the actual state flower of Pennsylvania, which I think is really cool that we have such a forest specialist as our state flower. It is Penn's Woods after all, um, but uh, really gorgeous white, pink sort of flowers uh, that bloom in the summertime. I highly recommend if you're not a Pennsylvanian, get up here in the summertime when the mountain laurel's blooming. It's a really fantastic experience to see these, these huge banks of, of all those flowers. Really important nectar source for our forest uh, uh, forest loving pollinators. Um, uh, some people don't like it because it can start to take over areas. Um, if you have a lot of deer around um, and there, there hasn't been a lot of fire moving through the area in a long time, it can start to take over a little bit too much. Um, and then what it can do is start to suppress things like oaks and hickories that we would want to be regenerating underneath it. Obviously, if we have a really nice canopy of oaks already, then we don't have to worry as much about the regeneration, but eventually those oaks in the overstory are going to die or be, or be cut down um, for use. Uh, and so we want some regeneration to be coming up. So sometimes this a mountain laurel or other uh, thicket forming shrubs like this, even though they're native, they can be a little bit of a challenge for your regeneration, but um, as long as they're not taking over a larger area, I still think they're a really wonderful resource to have. So, mountain laurel, call me a latifolia, really wonderful species to have in our understory and easy species to spot out in the wintertime.